October 6th, APCW, the Heat Seekers are returning, and we're coming for Tag Team Gold. Carolina Fight Club, you better be ready, tell them, Elliot. Carolina Fight Club, we've beat you before, and we'll give you your just due. You've beaten the Heat Seekers before, but understand this, October 6th, Douglasville, Georgia, APCW, the Heat Seekers are coming with a mission, a heat-seeking missile headed straight for those tag team titles. Sims caught him. Oh. And a kick to the back sends him to the floor. And now it's Sims. He looked for that opening, looked for the, that one window of opportunity to do something, and he got it. As Elrod was distracting referee, Sims with the work, and now it's Elrod Campbell in control. Elrod saying, I got him. Charges in. A mighty splash. Sims is saying, one more. So again, a coast-to-coast -coast toss from one turnbuckle to the next. Campbell says one more, charges in, telegraphed it, and still was able to get out of the way. And now still, forearm shots in the corner. Pulls himself up, and now it looks like he's ready to lay in some shots. And here comes Sean Sims on the outside. They're not concerned about winning this match at all. Into the ropes. They're going for the double clothesline, duck underneath by Steele, and a clothesline of his own. It is APCW coming back to Douglasville, Georgia. And here we have the charter members of Angel's Army going out to the ring, led by Angel herself. Elrod Campbell, Sean Sims, along with the... Uh, mistress of the group, if you will, I guess. And the gentlemanly thing that Elrod does is he leads her by the hand into the ring. How, how nice of it. And as you saw in the preceding footage, uh, Elrod and Sean seemingly have this uh, the bullseye painted on the, uh, the back all of steel, the strong man. But uh, it is a return bout. Whereas it looked like this steel was quite possibly going to win the match. Uh, they sacrificed the, the victory for an attempted beatdown, which didn't occur. Steel was smarter than that. Of course, I'm going over the uh, commentary, or well, not the commentary, the ring announcement. Yes. Elrod Campbell, Mr. Campbell to you. And we await his opponent to come into the ring to see whether he can secure that, that uh, big victory that he's been pressing against Angel's armies so far. They have done one dastardly thing to him after another. Will today be the day? waiting for the strong man to make his entrance through the curtains. And here he is. A true fan favorite here in APCW All-Pro Championship Wrestling. If you haven't been to the show to, to uh, receive a strong man mustache, 
or get the picture taken at the carnival tent, then I, I would encourage you to come on out. If but nothing else but that alone. And there is the great equalizer, the strong man Mallet. Of course, while he has that in his hands, neither Sean Sims nor El Rock Campbell, as tough as they may make themselves out to be, do not want any part of that mallet that he's walking around with. So now, here we go. A recap. He is, uh, he being Oliver Steele, taking several chances and against the Angels Army. But those opportunities to victory, as you just saw, were cut short. Even when he was, when he, even when victory was right within his grasp, it was cut off immediately. And immediately by that man that's in the ring right now with the microphone in his hand telling the people to shut up. Sean has no love lost for the crowd. That's for certain. Looks like Oliver still may be a little bit impatient considering what happened to him the previous month. He never, looks like he can't wait to get his hands on Elrod Campbell. And bear in mind, Elrod is no lightweight. You no, know, he's no pushover. He, he does a, perhaps not as strong as Oliver Steele, but he is strong all the same. Oh! What was, that, what was that I just said about not being a pushover? Oliver still just uh, proved me wrong there. And a spear. He opens it up, and he opens it up hard against Elrod Campbell. But too close to the ropes, too close. He got his foot up. Elrod is, uh, he is still a vet, regardless of when, like him or love him. Or love him or hate him. Still knows what he's doing in between the ropes, and that was some ring awareness right there. Took the hit, rolled over as close to the ropes as he could, but to see Oliver Steele is inviting Elrod Campbell, Mr. Campbell, back into the ring. And he's taking his time. He does not want to rush this. He considered his uh, in-ring knowledge, and he added that on with the uh, he added an intellect of Angel. It's going to make him a dangerous man. Back into the ring he goes. Now here we see uh, Steele sizing him up. There we go. There's the lockup. Two big guys hooking it up. Side headlock by Campbell. Back to the ropes. Oh, Campbell. The head of steam takes him over, but not enough to keep him down. He hooks in that uh, rear chin lock, but smartly, Steele is trying to get back to his feet. Into the ropes, reversal by Elrod. Attempt for the high cross body, Elrod catches it and sends the strong man down to the mat. One. Oh, excuse me, there's a two count but not enough to keep him down. Elrod is now picking out a body part, that being the lower back, but now the knees. Well, at least the left knee, trying to break the strong man down, and he's done a good job of it thus far. But it got him a little bit too close to the ropes, and you see Elrod just pulling him back. Forearm shot across the chest, the second one. Now he backs away, but this is backing away with a plan as you see Sean Sims goes in for the kill and choking out the strong man on the second rope. The fans are crawling foul, but the referee didn't see it, so it didn't, so it doesn't count. He's telling Sean to, to stick still, but when has Sean ever listened to the referee? Elrod goes for it for a kick. And now he's just picking him apart on the ropes. And sure enough for the audience, he's, 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 he's jawing with the, there you go, you see him again, jawing with the audience, boom. Another forearm shot right across the chest. Angel's waiting for her opportunity, look at that. Oh, a smack in the face. You can see it in her eyes that she was just waiting for that referee to move away. 
And even that smack across the head that Angel just did, you saw her in the background shaking her hand, it hurt. So perhaps Angel will learn a lesson and not do it anymore. Suplex by Elrod. Going for the cover. Still, still comes out at the two. Rear chin lock applied by Elrod. Looking to wear the strong man down a little bit more. Perhaps it'll take that in order for him to secure the three count. I would tend to believe as much as Oliver still has something to get even with the uh, members of Angel's Army, Elrod probably has something to prove, if for nothing else, to himself. I'm sure he does not want the idea that a uh, new face could walk in and give him that big of a challenge. He just gave a right hand, but it was returned immediately by the strongman and returned again. Now he's following in all shots. Sent a volley of right hands into the ropes. Reversal by Elrod. It's like he was going for a spear, perhaps, but Elrod was able to turn it around. That is the veteran experience of Elrod Campbell. Mr. Campbell to you. That's going for it again. Shoots him off into the ropes. Belly to belly reversal. With impact, does Oliver still sends Elrod Campbell down to the mat, but did not have enough to go for that cover. Perhaps that might have been what it took to get a three count, but he just did not have enough to roll himself over and place a body part on top of Elrod Campbell. But you hear people out in the audience saying, feel the steel. They're chanting for Oliver still to get it back going. Spear! And that'll do it. Oliver Steele secures the pinfall victory against Elrod Campbell. And as much as Angel's in the background screaming, no, it makes no difference now. The official word is Oliver Steele victorious over the members of well, one half of Angel's Army. Sean Sims does not seem pleased about that in the least. I would imagine that Elrod Campbell, once he gets his breath, would not be pleased about it either. Okay. Angel's uh, claiming that. Well, the crowd's not letting to speak. But if you can hear, she's saying that El excuse me, now Elrod, Oliver still cheated. She said Oliver still totally cheated because, of course, how else could Oliver still ever beat Elrod Campbell? Sean is allowing the fans to get underneath his skin. He's trying to get, get the fans to show some respect. But, but when has that worked? When has threatening the audience work to uh, garner respect? Now it's Elrod's turn on the mic. He's saying he thinks it's funny. Well, I'm sure there's a great deal that do. Well, basically, he's... If I am allowed to translate that, he more or less is just told that, that the loss will certainly not run Elrod Campbell out of APCW. Apparently it's gonna take a little bit more than that to get rid of Elrod. But now we are moving on into the, the next match immediately since uh, we have one half of the competitors already at ringside. Zellrod walks off in the background. Sean Sim remains in the ring, as does Angel at ringside. He 
Angels number one fan of Rance out saying the Angels are cry, baby. Her stomping up and down like that, tossing a tantrum, probably does not do well to uh, argue the case. But we go from the unpopular to the popular. The Bulldog, James Dillon, one of the most popular men that have ever walked through the curtains of APCW, has returned. And not only has he returned, he's returned, stepping back in the ring with a man that he has a long history with. Sean Sims, these two men have beat each other senseless. If you don't believe me, go back and watch some of those earlier matches. And they had a rivalry that spanned probably the better portion of a year. And now it's going to be rekindled, so to speak. One thing you can spec out of this match, both of these guys know each other very, very well. And I don't expect any surprises on either man to be uh, shown through. <clears throat> what I do expect is I expect a powerhouse fight. I expect a brawl. And quite frankly, it may just be a toss-up. People can boo Sean Sims as much as they like, but he has uh, improved by leaps and bounds over the last couple of months. The Bulldog is always game. He just saw he just charged right in as soon as the bell came in. Like I said, these guys know each other. There wasn't any reason for the Bulldog to even feel Sean Sims out. He knows what he's capable of. And he is firing off those right hands right into the ribs of Sims. Sims, oh my gosh. A big clothesline. And he goes for the cover. Several shots from James Dillon. One clothesline from Sean Sims. And he puts him down. Sean right now is like a shark in the water. He looks like he's smelling the blood. Well, I thought he was going to go for a leg drop or something of that sort, but he just uh, decided a, a kick in the head was just as well. And he just put some under rope. Here's Angel. She tried to do something, but she had to move out of the way. And Sean was coming in like a locomotive. So whatever she was planning for, Sean, uh, he was already in motion. Didn't really care. So we'll, we'll call him the hit man of the Army. I mean, uh, he he's in... He's in full throttle tonight. Sends the Bulldogs into the uh, turnbuckle here. Try to charge in again, but Bulldog got that foot up. And there's the receipt, a clothesline from James Dillon. Oh, another clothesline. Showing that he's got some power behind those big clotheslines of his as well. Fall away slam. And I don't want to say he got him up with ease, but he did get him up pretty quickly and and efficiently. And now we got him in the corner. The referee's making a warning, but the Bulldog is very aware of the count. He, he's, a, he's a vet here. He knows what he's doing. He's wrapped off 10 shots to the, to the dome of Sean Sims, if you will, and he's winding it up. Big, big right hand. And there's the effect of it. He dropped him like a tree. Angel does not seem pleased if you look at it. She's over there claiming it like it's her closed fist. Of course, now, she doesn't claim that when uh, it's Sean Sims delivering the closed fist, but what are you going to do? Sean trying to break free of this uh, front face lock here with a couple of right hands, unable to do it. Forearm shot by the Bulldog. And he just drove him down to his knees, still applying the front face lock. Angel over there beating on the mat, trying to get the attention of Sean Sims to get him motivated. Bulldog still has got him locked in. Sean drives him into the turnbuckles. And the referee's trying to break it up. Clean break by Sean Sims. I am amazed. And walks him out of the corner. Into the ropes. Duck underneath the clothesline attempt. And a shoulder block by the Bulldog. You can hear his fans out there. They're doing their, <laughs> his bark. From one corner to the next, Bulldog shoots him out. 
tries to charge him, but this time it is the Bulldog gets caught by a foot. Oh. That was a clothesline with authority. You saw Sean literally drove his body into that clothesline. The referee is saying that's a two. He got it up. Sean's complaining to the referee, but uh, referee Reese is doing a fine job here. I don't know why. Uh, I guess Sean just wants it to be over. Angel out there arguing with the audience. And there's a blatant choke. Referee Reese trying to get him out of the corner. To the, to the turnbuckles again. The turnbuckles have been a favorite spot here during this match. And this, these guys are not doing well with that charge in, but he got caught with another foot. But this time, following that, a super kick. And Elrod has just wandered back out the ringside. DDT by the Bulldog, James Dillon. And that might be enough if he goes for the cover. But he's not doing it. Looks like he feels like he needs a little bit something extra. Going up to the second turnbuckle, Elrod's distracting him. You saw the Bulldog was looking outside there for a moment, but now he's sizing Sean Sims up. Elbow drop from the second. Going for the cover. See, he thought that he had it right there, but not quite. I guess we will add this one to it, to the... Uh, Already storied history that these two have between each other. Yeah, Elrod right back there talking about Andrew, you're the best, and the people know it. I don't know if that has to do with anything in particular. Not now, there he is. Now he just came out, and you can see why he came out right there. Just to do things like that, to be a point of distraction. And... And not just a point of distraction, to get cheap shots in when he can. This is a right hand by Sean. He's really laying, laying all those boxes, those body shots. Using uh, Dylan like a, a punching bag there. Sean muscling uh, Dylan up to the top turnbuckle. Dylan trying to get free of him. Blocks that right. Blocks that shot, comes out with one of his own. But Sean with a right hand in return. Ooh. Looks like Dylan conked him with a, a, a head, but now, now he's trying to get a, a tornado DDT, I'd imagine. Looks like he's, he's got him locked in, but Sean feels it. He's doing everything to fight for him. A right hand and double goozle by Sean Sims. And that's just brain damage there. That's what some people have called it. That double choke slam. Two, three. Sean Sims gets the victory. And he drops an elbow. That's, the victory isn't enough. Another one. I guess now that there's whatever irritation they had from the first match, they are going to take out on James Dillon on, this, on the second one here. Elrod out there shouting, do it again. Angels out clapping. And I don't know if you would consider this a celebratory victory of sorts, but the referee got to do something about it. And reverse the decision or something and not just allow Sean to beat up on the Bulldog. Once again, the of the match, Sean. Sean just got that victory in. And you can see he's quite proud of himself. As is Angel. Now all they're doing is just uh, gaining the ire of the crowd. Angel feigning some sort of a concern that the Bulldogs hurt. Of course, we know that she does not care about that. He 
is not very happy, and I guess as he shouldn't be. He gave it everything he had, but that's uh, I guess that's a that's the way the losses fall. Hey, yo, Bulldog, this is my match, man. I beat him right clean this time. Yo, what's up? Dude, dude, don't be down. You beat Sean before. He had a lucky night. You beat him again. It's not a problem. You'll be all right, man. Cluster that has gone on is now giving Pinarelli time to recover. Pinarelli is spine buster with authority, puts Kingsley down. I'm sure uh, the ref, Brock, it might be a little bit out of a uh, out of sorts right now. Super kick hits the mark, goes to the cover. One, two. It looks like David thinks he's got it. There's anything that's going to be defined here as a grudge match. This is probably going to be it. The tag team match featuring Tommy Pinarelli, J.R. Reynolds, Jordan Kingsley, and Damian Bennett. Now we go into the ring announcement. Okay, you can see. <laughs> You see, Tommy Pernod just made him correct that it's not Mofiasa, it's Mafioso. Hope I'm saying it right before he comes talk to me. And say what you will about this pairing. I know there's some people out there that just vehemently dislike Tommy Pinarelli and J.R. Reynolds, but the fact of the matter is, is that it is an extremely talented team. In this team alone, you have a two-time APCW champion in Pinarelli. You have a, another former champion in J.R. Reynolds. And uh, quite frankly, an individual that has helped provide some of the best matches that I've seen in uh, APCW. And I would put the J.R. Reynolds matches against Damon Bennett. Up against any match in the country, that is a that is a fact. I would I would do that. That is those matches were that good. Now him running around saying all your women will love you tonight just for you know them getting a chance to look at him. That's a whole different issue. I mean uh, it is uh, arrogance at its at its highest. But I'm just saying, do not discount this team like them or not. But two individuals I know that will not discount them are these two gentlemen walking into their arena right now. Damon Bennett, Jordan Kingsley, the prodigy. Damon, of course, is a former two-time APCW champion. And I think the name, the prodigy, speaks for itself with Kingsley. That man has a bright, bright future ahead of him. I'm not sure if there's anything that he cannot do in the ring. 
probably as natural an athlete as I've ever seen in a, in a wrestler. The other thing that I would add to this is that Damon Bennett is also a former APCW Tag Team Champion, so he does know how the, the uh, Tag Team scenario works, how to give for your partner, so on and so forth, cut the ring in half. But the other thing that we've got going with this team is that they have almost gelled immediately. They, you know, that friendship outside the ring translates into their partnership inside the ring. And that chemistry that they have, I think, is... Uh, it's very telling, especially right here as you see them play uh, Paper, Scissors, Rock to see who's going to start off. You see uh, referee uh, Brian Brock checking everyone to make sure that there's no illegals coming. Illegal weapons, brass knuckles, chains, etc., etc. Now you see on the other side, we're not worried about you. I'm just going to assume that to be mind games because I know that Pinarelli and Ren Reynolds are smarter than that. <laughs> well, uh, Tommy is going about uh, the uh, jokes, the, the constant jokes that Damon Bennett and Jordan Kingsley have made at the expense of Tommy Pinarelli. I won't repeat them here, but uh, you just heard him say, you two are the, some of the most prejudiced people because I'm Italian. And and they have done uh, quite a bit of uh, some Italian jokes there. And, I, and again, I won't go off into that. I'm sure that they was, ooh, settling in the ring. And Reynolds, he, he took a, it just took a split second for him to find an opening. I mean, he just, he literally caught uh, Kingsley off guard just for a moment, and he charged in and caught with that forearm shot, but Kingsley turned it around pretty quickly. And there's the uh, first tag of the match. Bennett's in, turns it around, shoot Kingsley into the, to his opponent. And Reynolds is now crawling to get that tag in. It is Tommy Pinarelli, the first APCW champion facing off against the man that uh, unfortunately did throw him. It is the same man that Tommy Pinarelli has chased for a couple of months. So there, there's heat here. And now we hear uh, Bennett John with uh, Reynolds and Pinarelli was joined with Kingsley. But it is, it is between these two former champions right now that the, that the action has to be settled. It's the lockup, and they lock up like bulls. And Bennett's just, he's still playing with him. He's still got a very light, light mood happening here. A little bit of a purple nurple, perhaps, in the corner. Now we got strategy being talked with Tommy Pinarelli as he goes over to J.R. Reynolds, his tag team partner. And as much fun as uh, Damon is having right now, I know that uh, when push comes to shove, he is all game in the ring. It's a wrist lock applied by Pinarelli, just cranks it down. Roll through by, uh oh. Well, I was gonna say it was a complete roll through, but uh, he just showed out there for a little bit, but did bend it. And as good as Tommy Pinarelli is in the ground game, and the wrestling, just the, just the pure chain wrestling. Bennett is now trying to show that he can meet him on those terms. Forearm shot to the back. Turns that to a wrench of the arm into the ropes. Got down into a drop kick from his partner, Jordan Kingsley. And he hits the mark. Kingsley has him, shoots him into the road, took the blind tag, happened right there, and again, Reynolds has forearm shot to the back. Nice stomping out the arm and the shoulder. 
Armbar apply. A tag by Pinarelli. Gets back into the ring. He's cracking out the arm. And that's going to really work the, the shoulder joint there. Could quite possibly just strain some ligaments. German suplex with authority. And now uh, Reynolds, it is his turn to shout wrestling to the audience and, and be uh, assumably showered with praise, but that didn't happen. Kingsley trying to fight it through. Sends Reynolds in. Hip toss into the ropes. Beautiful elbow drop. Going for the cover. Reynolds able to shoot that right shoulder off of the mat. Make sure that referee Brian Brock sees it. Now into the boot of uh, Damon Bennett. The tag is made. And uh, talking about robberies, I just spoke of it earlier. Bennett and Reynolds had quite the robbery. Double suplex by uh, Bennett and Kingsley. And another elbow. Very articulate elbow by Bennett. As was Kingsley's. And Bennett just uh, hooks <laughs> Reynolds, takes him away from the corner. Saw that tag coming and tags off to his partner. Body shot and a kick to the shins and the oof. Super kick just drops Reynolds down to the knee. And a low in Zagiri. Reynolds may not know where he is right now. And that was the. <laughs> I was going to say, that was on the mark right there. Reynolds, that wasn't a blind kick. He deliberately shot that kick right toward the shoulder. It's the same shoulder that had been worked on earlier in the match. Chopped it with an arm breaker. Now he's applying a, another arm straining maneuver. Stretching it out. Kingsley breaks free. Oh. Whatever Kingsley was trying to, Reynolds was able to turn it into almost a deep six slam. Pinarelli comes in, elbow shot to the head, goes for the cover, but not enough to keep the prodigy down. No. That's confidence. That's confidence. And, and, and like I said, Pinarelli had been chasing Bennett for the better portion of a couple of months, almost a full year. And you just saw right there, he said, make the tag. And Bennett obliges. So they're trying to go at it. Pinner really wants a piece of it, but Bennett was ready for it. Into the boot. And tags back into Kingsley. That may be a little bit too soon, forearm shot. But it is good tag team wrestling. Now, if any one person stay in there too long, splash in the corner. Spine buster. And that's a move that is normally associated with Pinarelli. Oh, gosh, I'm not even sure what to call that. Just a backdrop into a spiral tap, maybe. Goes for the cover. It's a good tag combination thing. That Reynolds, real quick. That, and Kingsley, oh, I said Kingsley made a wrong decision to complain to the ref about it. He was trying to get the ref's attention. But Reynolds was... Uh, Real fast there. Dragged his partner to the corner, made the tag, ran in and, and closed line Kingsley while he was trying to get the ref to pay attention to what was going on. And again, you see he is going back towards that left shoulder and arm. Barred it out right in the center of the ring. And Kingsley doesn't have many options left right now. He's got to find some way that he can counter it and get out of it, as he just did. Reynolds now trying to break free of the legs of Kingsley, and he does. Gives him a kick to the side of the head for his troubles. Bennett trying to make the tag. And Reynolds putting his body in between Kingsley and Bennett. And the ropes behind him. Single leg drop kick puts Kingsley down. DDT, my gosh. And he spiked him with that. And I think Bennett might have felt the... Uh, the danger needle getting, getting high there. Yeah, I know normally he believes in Jordan to come out and kick out of it, and, and he may well have done it. 
But Bennett had to get in and save him after that nasty DDT that was very likely going to hold him down. And now you got Pinarelli who's picking up where Reynolds left off, drapes the arm over the second rope, picks the leg, drops Kingsley before he can even get three, trying to get through the legs of Tom Pinarelli. Pinarelli too smart for it. And you hear him saying, not going to happen. Applies that front face lock, puts his body in between Kingsley and his partner. His tag team wrestling at his finest. Cranks down on the arm. Side rushing leg sweep using the arm as the base point. Reynolds over in the corner saying, you can't do it, rookie. You know, as much as it is a physical game, it is a middle game. And if Reynolds can get into Kingsley's head, oh, knee drop. He may be able to get him just to mentally quit. But I think Kingsley's got more in him than that. Bennett trying to get back in the ring as uh, Reynolds is stopping Kingsley out. You can see now the fun and games for Damian Bennett are over. He's trying his best to get in there. This is where the emotion is taking place. And uh, Reynolds tried to make a charge into the corner and nail Kingsley in the stomach. But Kingsley had a little bit more left in him, got out of the way and charged into the post that Reynolds. And now Kingsley's fighting back, trying to get loose of this. Spinning in his gear. Goes for the cover. But Pinarelli on the money, drops those that forearm shot and sends him out to the floor. Like it or love it, he uh, did the smart thing, and now Bennett comes in and puts Pinarelli to the floor, and now it's Riddle's turn as he sends Damian Bennett to the floor. All three men, well, I shouldn't say all three, but three out of the four have hit the floor. And now Riddle's feels, <laughs> he's feeling it. He feels like he got something planned here. As Pinarelli pulls his uh, opponents up, sends on off of the top rope, to the floor, J.R. Reynolds has taken out everybody, partner included. But he is still on his game. He knows who the legal man is. He brings in Jordan Kingsley. Kingsley, shining wizard to the back of the head. Goes for the cover. No. And I would have thought, I would have completely thought that that would have done the trick right there. But Kingsley's got fight left in him and J.R. Reynolds is sizing up. He's getting ready. He's getting ready for something that's pillaring holding. Bennett on the outside. There's a cutter. Kingsley back up. There. Close line, a wild close line, and a miss. Oh, my gosh. That looked like he could have broke his neck. That's it. One. No. At the two count. And that look on Reynolds' face is appropriate. You can see it right now. He's saying, come on in here. And, and, and I can't fault him for that. Because I would have thought that that second cutter would have done the job. He spiked him and spiked him hard. Now both of these guys are sizing him up, getting ready for something. But Bennett is in for the save. And Bennett now, he's just cleaning house. Because he knows that Jordan is in bad shape. But Jordan off the top rope. A curb stop with a springboard. And he's got it. And he just pinned J.R. Reynolds. And I guess that chemistry that we talked about earlier in the, in the match shined through right there. Oh, my gosh. It is a, a, a low blow on Kingsley. And Pinarelli just cheap shot at Damian Bennett, sent him out to the ring. I mean, not to the floor, out of the ring. Pinarelli is keeping Bennett on the floor. And now they got a chair. And it, and it looks like it is more not just about to win. Oh. And there's no mistake. They, they just went after the same arm that they have beat on through the duration of this match. David Bennett just got a cane from, from a fan in the front row. Well, that right there tells you who the fans are rooting for. They, they wanted uh, David to get in there and clean house. But it looks like Reynolds and Pinarelli have just done what they've aimed to do. And they say he's signing on death warrant. Well, those two guys have lost the match officially, but they don't look like they care. 
conversely, these two guys won the match and they don't look like they've won. Well, officially speaking, it is uh, Damian Bennett and Jordan Kingsley that have won the match, but Kingsley is the worst for wear in this situation. After having his arm and shoulder attacked for the better portion of maybe 10 minutes or so, now you got to get getting yanked across an inanimate, hard object like a chair. It wouldn't surprise me if he's just been dislocated. And you see how tender that is. Just a touch of it hurts. We'll be right back, folks. He is still winding up. He's, he's sizing up the dark mind for that lariat. He's calling for it. And he nails dark mind. But again, I have not seen anyone put dark mind through the paces. The Iron Bear is doing right now. He's got him in the cover. But no one there to make the count. And quite possibly too close to the ropes. Brock is over. He's made a count. But if he didn't see the knee, he said, they see it right there. Dark Mind's left knee is leaning practically on the bottom rope. But even if he didn't catch that, Dark Mind lifted his left arm, or left hand, and grabbed the bottom rope as well. So that, that was the escape. Not often, not often at all that you see him even need to escape something. And he's going for it. Going for it again. And surprisingly, surprisingly, Dartma ducks out and, and bails. Grabs his championship and he's saying no. The count is on, and Dartmouth's got the championship, and he looks like he's making zero effort to get back into the ring. The Iron Bear is sitting in the ring right now, and he's waiting. And I'm sure that he can't believe it. I can't believe that Dartmouth's not turning around. And the fans don't look like they can believe it either. Dartmouth is standing his ground. It, 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 okay, maybe he's coming back in. No. No. He's, he's decided against him. He's saying he's the champion. You have to beat me. And that's it, folks. The winner by a count out, Tommy. Iron Bear Tommy Coffey wins the match. But as the ring announcer's just informed me, he, he wins the match by a count out. But unfortunately, on a count out, championships will not change hands. So despite the fact that Darkmon has technically lost, he remains. APCW champion. Return match for the APCW championship. The Dark Mod. It's going to be challenged by the Iron Bear, Tommy Coffey, again. The one man that has pushed Dark Mod to his absolute limits. And this time, the match is going to be contested as a no disqualification match. And I'm not entirely sure which person that's going to favor the most. I've seen Dark Mind in some uh, real knockdown, drag out brawls. And uh, Tommy Coffey has definitely shown that he is willing to go the distance and brawl right along with the best of them. So I hate to use it again. But this match, in my estimation, comes off as a toss-up. But to say that about anybody that Dark Mind is going into the ring with says a lot for their opponent. Now we have the Iron Bear making his entrance. Can't say it again, not many people 
Uh, able to meet the dark mount on his terms. On his turf, for that matter. But if anybody's made a believer out of me, it, it is uh, this this gentleman here. Uh, the one thing that I think Dartmouth's going to have to look out for as it relates to the Iron Bear is that stiff clothesline that he utilized to level the Darkmon the last time. And it, and only by the grace of him falling by the ring did he save himself from a countdown. Heard me earlier say that this is as much a uh, mental game as it is physical. One thing I will add to that, and a little caveat to it, is Dark Mon believes himself to be a monster. And as long as he believes it, it is going to be a fact as far as he's concerned. It drives him to do the things that he does. It drives him to absorb the punishment that he takes. And, and it drives him to do things like this. Oh, nasty, painful, forceful shots. No. And a second time. Big, big suplexes, two in a row from the dark mind. That monstrous... Psyche of his, ooh, close lines at the back head, pushes him probably beyond the limits of normal physicality. Darkman just sent coffee out to the floor. We're gonna get the camera shot out there. They see Darkman going after coffee. Not gonna get him time to breathe. He utilizing that strength, the body slam on the hard floor. No pads out here, folks. Got to get out of the way of the action. This dark mind's getting him back up. Coffee's trying something, anything that he can fight back with. Two shots, but he's still met by dark mind. Into the post. That could do it possibly right there. Tommy just went face first into the steel post. That might be enough to end whatever aspirations Coffee had for being the APCW champion. And give credit where credit is due. Darkmon has an open uh, book, uh, open invitation for this championship of his. But man, there's a reversal by Coffee. This might be what he needs. I was going to say, Darkman could have gone for the pin, but he wanted to send Coffee into the steps. But Coffee just reversed it. And that may be exactly what he needed to get this thing back on track, or at least in his, remotely in his favor. Forearm shot by Coffee. The Iron Bear is trying now to uh, slay the monster, if you will. You hear some people out there say, come on, Darkman. You have some out there say, come on, Tommy. Face first into the solid steps there. I mean, that is hard, hard wood. And now he's saying, somebody give me a chair. The fans have given him chairs there. No. And before, and before he was able to utilize the chair, whatever it is that he was planning to do, uh, Darkmon retaliates. And here we go, Darkmon. Back first into the apron. The uh, fans just 
has uh, handed it to Darkma now. But Tommy sees it coming and stops it. And now it's Tommy's turn. Use that solid cane across the back of Darkmon. Darkmon felt that. And maybe it'll, and you know, this may be the thing that works in Tommy's favor. Like I said before, Darkmon pushes himself beyond all reasonable limits to be the monster that he believes himself to be. But uh, Coffee, with this uh, no disqualification rule, may be able to, to do more things to Darkmon's body than even he can accept. But I haven't seen the, what limits Darkmon can take. And I know that he can take a lot. The action seems to have spilled back into the ring. Darkmon making his way back in. The Iron Bear getting up to his knee, or at least attempting to. Gets up to his feet. And there he is. He's going for the choke slam. He heard, he heard the fans out there saying, hey, you want it? And he's got it. But Iron Bear fighting free. Three elbow shots. Breaks the grip of the dark mind. And a splash in the corner. And he's had one more. As Dark Mind staggers to the other side. Dark Mind's trying to get, get uh, out of the line of fire, if you will, but it didn't work. As Tommy just adjusts and comes at him to the other side. And believe me when I tell you, it is not often that you will see Dark Mind in any sort of trouble like this. Ducks out of the way of that third splash, and he's calling for a choke slam. This time he's got it goozled. Oh! And single-handedly gets Tommy up. But Tommy gets that shoulder off of the mat. He is still in this. And now the fans, at least some fans out here, saying one more time. And it looks like he's, he being Darkbond, is willing to oblige, going for a second choke slam. And he gets it. Second time around, another choke slam, two. And Tommy Coffey gets the shoulder up once again. Somehow, he is able to survive. I would assume that one choke slam would be enough, but it wasn't enough to keep the Iron Bear down. Tommy Coffey walked into this match willing to go and put his body through all sorts of punishment, I'm sure, just by agreeing to be in a match, a no disqualification match with that man right there. The monster Dark Mind. Dark Mind was looking like he was trying to find some accessory that he could bring into the ring and use for his benefit, but it looks like the championship belt will be enough. He's gonna crack that thick metal plating across the head of Tommy, but he misses. Shoulder block by Coffee. A forearm shot. And a wild shot, but it connects. Dark Mind catches Tommy Coffee reversal by Coffee this time into the ropes behind him. And a third shoulder block. I should say a second one. <laughs> Maybe a third hit, perhaps. But it puts Dark Mind down. Either way it goes, whether my count is on or off. He got him. And now this is what Dark Mind has had to look out for. That clothesline. The one that put him down in the previous encounter. The one that he had to save himself from. And he just ducked out of it. It looks like he's going maybe perhaps a fall away. No. Oh, my. Woo. That looked painful. Out of the fireman's carry position, a toss-up into a gut buster. One, two, and that was barely... A shoulder off of the mat, barely. I mean, that, that was a real judgment call by Brian Brock. I see Dark Mind and some fans out there saying that was three. And that might have been the best camera angle that we had for that. I mean, but he, it took maybe everything that he had to get that left shoulder off of the mat. Dark Mind now, again, looking for something, anything that he can break out that will allow him to gain some sort of advantage. That he has to do this is, is amazing. Because Tommy Coffey is in this. He, he's in for a fight. He's giving it to him. 
But this chair may take the fight out of him. If Dartmon is able to get it in there and connect. Eyes to the ropes, grabs his chair. And just jams it into the stomach of the Iron Bear. And now, Darkmon's looking to do something on top of the chair. A DDT, perhaps. He's in DDT position. Coffee just counters it. It's an inverted atomic drop. And I don't care what you believe in, man or monster, that's going to hurt. And now Coffee warming that chair up with a shot across the head of the dark line. Going for the cover. Two count. Dark Mind's able to get the shoulder up off the mat. He is still in this thing. He is still fighting to maintain the championship. But the chair is still in play. And now he's warming it up again. It's coffee. Dark Mind gets back up to his feet. Coffee sizes him up. A second shot to the head. Going for the cover. And Darkmon gets the shoulder up. It has been the hallmark of the Darkmon match. When the best moves have been put on him, somehow, somehow, he finds the will to keep going. I don't know if I've ever seen another individual with the willpower that Darkmon has to keep fighting through whatever pain is being dished out on him. And right now he's trying to find something to get back up. He's telling Tommy, hold on, hold on. He doesn't, he's begging off. And this is unusual for Dark Mind. Drop toe hold. A little bit of a deception there perhaps by a Dark Mind to lure Tommy into a false sense of security. He's got the legs tied up. Almost into a submission hold here. Grabbing the wrist, cranking back on Tommy. Referee's asking him. Tommy's not giving up yet. Oh! A curb stomp from a helpless position into the chair. That should do it too. No. Oh. And if anything, uh, that I, there's a time that I would believe that this would be a three count. That should have been it. You would think that that would do it. But somehow or another, the Iron Bear is still fighting. I mean, I said earlier that I haven't seen anybody with the willpower, Darkmon. Perhaps that may change after this match. Darkmon saying it was a three. He's, he, he's asking the fans, did you think it was a three? And the referee saying it was two. And the referee, Brian Brock, standing his ground, saying, well, maybe not standing his ground. He's actually backpedaling. But who wouldn't backpedaling when you're face-to-face -face with that? And Dark Miner's ass, he's saying it was three. And some fans out there agree with him. They're saying it was a three count. And, I, and I'm not sure that I could disagree. That, that, that shot to the... That curb stop to the chair, I, I would think would put any human being down. And now he's going at the Brock. He's got Brock by the throat. And it oh, looks like he's going for a choke slam. That's just the frustration from the dark bar there. He said it was a three count. And he disagrees, apparently, very vehemently against Brian Brock's decision. That could have worked against the cause of Darkmont as the referee is now down. Who's going to count the ball? A shot to the abdomen. Now Darkmont wails that chair across the back of Tommy Cole. And he's got it again. He's doing it enough now that he's knocking pieces off of the chair. Another big shot across the back. And another shot. Another shot. And he's giving us—he's giving that chair to business. That's for certain. 
more appropriately is giving Tommy Carver the business, and he's going for the cover. And still, still, Coffee exhibits the will to win. And now, Darmon Sanders out of three count. I mean, he's already put down one referee. I think the precedent has now been set. We know that the referees, especially in the notice qualification match, have no sanctity. No sanctuary away from Dark Mom because they can't disqualify him for the assault. But referee Reese was smarter and got out of the ring. He slid out and got away. And now back to the chairs. Dark Mom is charging in. Hits the rope center. The chair just ricochet. The chair just ricocheted back into the face of Dark Mom. That might be a fatal mistake. Tommy Coffey with the clothesline. And he just wrapped that right around the neck of Dark Mont. Dark Mont is down. He is out. I have not seen him in this position ever from any match, any place, in any promotion. Goals on the cover too. No. And somehow Dark Mont still gets free. Dark Mont and Iron Bear are pushing each other to their absolute physical limits. Tommy, Tommy Coffey has survived multiple chair shots to the head and across the back. Choke slams and everything else under the sun that Dark Mind could possibly deliver. Dark Mind has survived a big clothesline. The, the bread and butter of Tommy Coffey and that Dark Mind's, oh man, that was a nasty shot there. Right across the back of Coffee. And he looks like he's out on his feet, even if he's on his feet on the ropes. And Dark Mind just hoisted him up. He's got him in electric chair position on the shoulders of the monster. And he's trying to hook him in. I don't know what he's looking for there. And, and he's using all the power he's got. Oh! Some people call that a one-wing angel, perhaps a one-wing devil. Three, a one-wing demon. He just sent him to hell, that's for certain, and won the match. But a dark mind has just Survived might be the appropriate word here. But he stands tall, and there it is. There's the scene, Dark Mind on his feet, standing tall, championship in hand. And here we have a new development on the side here. Sean Sims and Angel have just wandered out to ringside, and Sims just asked for the microphone. demanding that the people shut up so he can speak. I'm not sure they're going to give him that luxury. Well, Angel's saying, go ahead and talk anyway. Well, apparently we have a new challenger waiting in the wings. Sean Sims, who is a bit of a monster in his own right, is now challenging Dartmouth for the APCW Championship. Let me get something straight. For you, you've been here two years. You've seen all the bodies I've broken in this ring. And after watching what I just did to that, Well, I'm 
Well, it is challenge accepted. And quite frankly, I'm not sure if I'd expect anything less from Dark Bond. He certainly fears no wrestler that I've ever seen. And as big and as powerful and as big of a monster as uh, Sean Sims is, I don't think that Dark Bond is going to be afraid to step in the ring with him. But on the other side of that coin, I don't think Sean Sims is afraid of Dark Bond either. The victorious monster, Darkmon, stands for the APCW Championship. And we now know that he's already got his next, oh. <laughs> he got his next challenger. I guess that was one last parting shot for the ref. We'll be looking for you guys uh, in the main event tonight. At least you are, you are yeah, not Carolina supposed to main event. Yeah, Carolina going down. These figures are going up. We're the winners. New tag team champions. New tag team champions here at APCW. Guaranteed. Best tag team to ever come here. Better than Rock and Roll Express. Better, better than Carolina Fight Club. Number one tag team here at APCW. Number one tag team in Georgia. Number one tag team in the South. Number one tag team in America. Maybe number one tag team in the entire world. Our record proves it. Our gold record person. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. It's time for the main event, and it is going to be headlined, this APCW show, by the Tag Team Champions. And the Tag Team Championship, Carolina Fight Club, taking on the Heat Seekers in another title defense. The Carolina Fight Club, the record in APCW, they are the longest reigning champions. As I was saying that they are the longest reigning champions in APCW period, singles or tag. Thank you for your support. Thank you for always supporting the Carolina Fight Club. I gotta tell you, this match tonight, it is our toughest to date. It is. Let's face it, the Heat Seekers, four times four-time NWA World Tag Team Champions. They just recently had a successful tour in Japan, a successful tour where they won the Intercontinental Tag Team titles. I mean, guys, seriously, give these guys, seriously, a big round of applause for that, seriously. seriously a true feat, a true feat. You guys, right now, turn it up. You guys, seriously, are the best tag team going right now, but you're not better than the Fight Club. Tonight, tonight, you two see why we are the best kept secrets in wrestling. 
wrestling and why the Fight Club is coming for you. That could be very well, a very articulate point. The uh, best kept secrets in wrestling, the uh, Carolina Fight Club, who have uh, again, got to reiterate, they've been the longest reigning champions in APCW uh, championships history. Almost held the tag team titles for a consecutive year, full year. But uh, they uh, dropped it, won it back immediately. And they have been running the tag team division for over a year at this point. And even at the beginning of this, you heard the Heat Seekers say that, hey, you know, we've beaten you, you've beaten us. I guess we'll consider this the uh, rubber match, if you will. The accolades that the Heat Seekers have, you just heard, got run down by the, uh, the Fight Club there. But let's give a little bit of the, a praise to the Fight Club in that they have beaten a number of teams, including uh, who you may see on MLW Wrestling right now, the Dirty Blondes. They've beaten the uh, Old School Express to regain the Tag Team Championships. They beat, ironically, two individuals who are going to be facing each other next month, Dark Mon and Sean Sims, who uh, paired off with each other for a one-time event. They are as capable as any tag team I have ever seen, the Carolina Fight Club. But they're going to have to be on their game if they're going to go against uh, the team of the Heat Seekers. So we got Sigmund in the ring right now. Facing off against Jeff Lewis Neal, who's locked into a rear waist lock. Turns that into a Wrist lock of his own. Sigmund trying to find a way to, to uh, break free of that, roll through. They yeah, are doing a great job of this uh, chain wrestling right now. Sigmund breaks him into a uh, head scissors. We got some uh, fans out there telling, just saying shut up for some reason. I don't even think people are making noise, but fans out there saying shut up. There's a nice exchange between the two. Nobody's really breaking any ground here. Nobody's uh, gaining an advantage. Sigmund locks into the arm bar. He's trying to control the wrist, as you heard. That's wrist control, and he does. He locks in that wrist lock. Jeff Lewis Neal with the reversal. Not enough to uh, break free of Sigmund. He's trying, but he hasn't found the escape yet, just yet. And now Garrett Adams in the ring. Sigmund trying to make the tag, unable to do so. Adams just yanks him down. And trying, perhaps looking for the ropes to. Uh, Cause a break? No, not not for a break. Just using it for a little bit of leverage. Flips out and turns that wrist lock around. And roll through by Adams. Sigmund is going to have to get out and make that tag. He he's been in this for uh, quite a quite a bit of time here, and that's not going to his team. Now I don't want to doubt the four-time World Tag Team Champions, but uh, Russell is there waiting in the wings. There we go. There's the tag. Russell's in. Sigmund's out. Eric Adams is waiting on him. Uh, Russell's out there drawing with some of the fans at the ringside. Tell him what he's going to do. Is, what I do to him is your fault. Uh, Russell's saying, I don't want to wrestle him, but I don't know if that's that. Maybe that's a little bit of a, a personal thing. Perhaps he, he wanted to match up strength against uh, Jeff Lewis Neal. Hey, here. Russell's going again, telling him you keep your mouth shut. Spend a lot of time drawing with the fans on the front row. 
remember, time will be on the champion side as uh, the Heat Seekers are either going to have to pin or submit Carolina Fight Club in order to walk away as the champions today. Jeff Lewis Neal takes a kick, prevents the uh, tag there. And again, kicks out that leg. Kicks up, no, and kicks Sigmund away. And out of the headlock position, tosses him into a backdrop. Now I got a head scissors and headlock combination. Russell slides out of the ring. Sigmund was tossed out earlier. My club are uh, feeling it right now. I'm hearing some fans out there saying you can't beat them. I would not go so far just yet. I mean, it, it, it is uh, foolish to discount the Heat Seekers this early. A couple of head scissors and leg locks, that they don't win the match. Wear down, perhaps. But it's going to take a little bit more than that to beat the guys with the uh, resume that they've got. Goes over to the corner. Now they're discussing some strategy. Jeff Lewis Neal just... Waiting patiently. Got to give them uh, credit for their championship pedigree, them being the Carolina Fight Club. They're not rushing into anything. There's a knee lift. Forearm shot. He caught Jeff slipping there. Elbow shot. By Russell. Into the ropes. Duck underneath the clothesline. And like a steam truck, he just runs him down, sends Russell to the mat. There's the tag. To the ropes. Here comes the classic. Well, look, I was going to say there's a twist on the classic move right there. The knee lift into the, uh, the neck breaker. But a good shot to the knee lift normally, but uh, the Fight Club have made it their own, apparently. Side headlock. Dead center of the ring. So Russell may not have wanted to, to be in the ring with Eric Adams, but he has Eric Adams right now. Russell's putting him off into the corner. The tags have been uh, pretty consistent on the side of the fight club. I haven't seen the Heat Seekers use that much continuity as of yet. I'm a little surprised. Did the ropes as Adam. Hip toss. And there's a shot from the outside. Elbow drop from Russell. Right hand by Neal, and a discus punch puts Russell down. Going for the cover. He's able to get out of it. Perhaps Russell and maybe the Heat Seekers in general are regretting this match. Flapjack. And here comes what Jeff Lewis Neal is known for, and he loves to do it. That knee drop right across the chest. Yes. There's, there's the uh, the continuity of the partner coming in to make sure that the three count does not go down, even even if Russell was able to get the shoulder up, which he did. There's the tag, Sigmund back in the ring. Deep arm drag. And he puts Sigmund down. And it's an arm drag into an arm bar. Quick elbow shots there by Jeff Lewis Neal. Bars out the arm again. And you can hear uh, Sigma saying, no, he does not give up. And he, that's one thing he doesn't want to. You hear fans out there saying, break it. <laughs> but I know that the, uh, the fight club's a little, a little better than that. They may tease breaking it, but I, I'm sure that they, they're not going to want to permanently hurt this man. They're not those kind of guys. Although he does have uh, Sigmund worried right now as he attaches him into a, a knuckle lock. Twist that arm around, and there's the tag. Jeff Lewis Neal has control here. They both shoot him off to the ropes. Back elbows. Now the legs. A Sigmund with the roll through. And that's a Rock and Roll Express move right there. And the 
double shoulder block, drives Sigmund to the mat, and smartly, he rolls himself out to the floor. Here comes Jeff Lewis kneeled, and Rose has been held open for that suicide dive through the ropes. And the Fight Club are really feeling this, this match right now. Looks like the Heat Seekers are in some severe trouble. Side headlock applied. There's the tag. As you saw, uh, Eric Adams walked himself to his corner. Jeff Lewis knew what he was going for. That's reversed by Sigmund. They hooked the leg by Russell on the outside. We forgot that that was the outside man. And now Sigmund just driving those forearm shots in the back, in the back of the head of Jeff Lewis Neal. Good shot by Russell. Elbow. Now Russell takes him. This is a turnbuckle. And it just crumbles down in a heap. Two count. Russell. He hit a pass and let's go, Jeff. Eric trying to get his partner motivated to get back into this thing. Quick shot there, Russell in full control into the ropes. Drop kick from out of nowhere because that drop kick is it. Just nothing to make the tag. Eric Adams gets a good shot in with that kick. There's a knee lift. He goes after his partner, puts him down so that the tag cannot be made. And now Adams, looks like he's uh, ready to call off some shots here. And Sigmund comes up to stop him, but he gets a shot in the head for his trouble. But that was all the distraction it needed for, for, for Russell to get free and drop him face first across the turnbuckles and now elbow drop of his own, going for the cover, hooks the leg, but not enough. Quick forearm shot, and he's got Eric Adams rocking right now. This may be the break that the Heat Seekers have been desperately looking for it so far. Tag off to his partner, Sigmund. And still the fans are rooting for him. They're saying, let's go, Eric, let's go. Double throat thrust by Sigmund. And, that, and now they're just <laughs> teasing uh, Jeff Lewis Neal into the ring as they just wear away on Eric Adams. And Jeff is not doing this, well, he wasn't doing his part in any favors by standing there arguing with the referee. I know that the emotions are running high, but standing there arguing with the referee only gets the, uh, your opponent's time to do more damage. And damage they did do. And now Russell with the uh, rear chin applied, but Adams getting back up to his feet. A couple of shots, he's able to break himself free, but he got caught with that back elbow. And now just a series of right hands to the side of the head of Eric Adams and a stomp into the abdomen. Referee Reese trying to do what he can to break him free. And Sigmund, now, now, now you see the Heat Seekers are feeling better about it. They just said winners. Drag him into the corner. Got him locked in. He put him out a little bit, slung him back into the corner. I hear some fan out there say, you ain't going to beat him. Don't sell him short yet. Now, I did not have a camera angle to prove it, but I'm almost certain that Sigmund was digging in the eyes. But I don't want to call anything that I'm not sure about. Suplex, one, two. Adams able to get that kick out. He heard Sigma saying one, two, three. What he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to get frustrated like we saw in the previous match. Cannot take those frustrations out on the referee. Regardless of whether he agrees with the count or not, the referee's count is what's going to matter in this situation. Now he got them going for another double team. Inverted atomic drop, followed by a big boot. And a roll up. Eric Adams is uh, fighting back. He 
Still got some fight left in that body of his to try to get out of this. And Russell crossing the arms right across the own throat and carotid arteries of Adams. And you heard Adams, not Adams, excuse me, you heard Elliott saying, hey, he's choking himself. And, then, and technically speaking, he's right because he's, he's driving on it. Forcing it to choke out on the side of the neck. Jeff Lewis Neal came in and tried to break it up, but all he served to do was get a, a quick switcheroo by Sigmund and Elliott. And he's saying, hey, we tag. And I guess it doesn't matter now because they're doing the switch back out. Eric Adams has got to do something real big to get out of this bear hug right now. The Fight Club are in a bad, bad way. Sigmund comes in, he distracts the referee, does the tag on the other side, but the referee doesn't see it. And he's hooking, uh, he's trying to hook uh, Jeff Lewis Neal. Now he's got him, look at that. He just drug him back to the corner there. And unfortunately for the Fight Club, it was a tag, it was a physical tag, but the referee did not catch that. So they've been forced to, uh, well, Eric Adams at least, has been forced to carry this thing on. Sigmund's got him in the corner, and you see Elliot over there just drawing with some fans again. He's been doing it quite a bit. You see that there's a fan right there just pointing at him. Uh, they're not taking too kindly to the fact that the Fight Club have been able to maneuver the referee the way that they have so far. Eric Adams trying to get himself back into the game here. He took a, a big right hand. I mean, he literally just knocked himself off the feet by doing it. But a front face lock applied by Sigmund, and he has the match back under control, at least for the time being. Referee checking in, make sure it's not a choke. Eric Adams is not giving up. Elliot on now outside telling the fans to, to keep it down. You see Jeff Lewis Neal trying to get the referee's attention. He's telling them, hey, look, a partner's foot is under the ropes. It should break, which is which is all true. Jeff Lewis Neal did make a, a great observation there, and you've got to imagine that he is extremely frustrated at this point. That he is trying his best to, to do right for his partner, but going in there hurts him. Staying on the outside hurts him. He's telling the referee stuff that he can't see. Just like right there, look at that. The statement just just clipped uh, Adam's throat across the. The second rope, Jeff Lewis Neal is trying again to get the referee's attention, but doing that is uh, really hurting Adams, or at least is providing the window of opportunity for the Heat Seekers to continue doing what they're doing. The referee's asking him, but I do not expect either Elliott or Sigma to admit to uh, illegal double team. There's a tag again. And now we're seeing why exactly the Heat Seekers are the team that they are, that they've gone around the country and the world collecting tag team championships. Fight Club, they're sticking with it. They're, they're hanging on. Sigma just went in. And look, he's, he's playing the game with uh, Jeff Lewis near now, distracting him. And with that distraction, he just went and uh, provided an opportunity for his partner to choke out Adams on the outside. I don't know, he, he had the, perhaps a t-shirt or just a, 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 a rag, or whatever that cloth happens to be, he wrapped it around the throat of uh, Adams just to uh, keep him down. They are putting a beating on the fight club right now. Back into the ring goes Adams, courtesy of Sigmund. Get him back up to his feet. What he's prepping them for there. They'll send him into the turnbuckle. Up to the other side. Here he comes, charges the old. Sigmund tried to charge in. Perhaps a, a, a Bronco Buster, perhaps, a, or a drop kick. Either way, it didn't work. What he was aiming for was Eric Adams. What he caught was the second turnbuckle. And now there's a slow snail's pace race 
Sigmund just makes the tag. Adams just makes the tag. Jeff Lewis kneels in, and now Elliott knows he's in trouble. He just catches the right hand to the face. A back elbow. Jeff Lewis kneels, shoots him off. Backdrop. And this is every place that Neil wants to be. He's got a bunch of, bunch of pent up frustration. And he's looking to get the loose hill. That's two count. And you can imagine right now, he is looking to make the Heat Seekers, both members, if he can get his hands on them, pay. Charges in, but he catches a foot from uh, Elliott. He hoists him up into power slam position. You have to tag. Quick slam down, Sigmund up to the top rope. Looks like he was coming off of the head, but, but Jeff Lewis Neal rolled in. And Sigmund caught his head across the mat. Now he did catch a little bit of his body on top of Jeff Lewis Neal, but it wasn't enough. That was just kind of a supplementary hit. Elliott to the outside, courtesy of Adams, and now they are looking for the finish. They're, they being the fight club, there's that double super kick they like to do. And it just dropped Sigmund like, like a tree. Adams was being pushed back to the corner, and Elliott just looked like he grabbed one of the title belts and quickly ran across the back of uh, Jeff Lewis Neal. Sigmund's got the leg hooked. Adams is, and Elliott are hooked up on the outside. Adams is not going to make it in. And there's the three count. Sigmund has just covered and pinned Jeff Lewis Neal. It looks like it's official. The Carolina Fight Club have just been beating your new champions, APCW Tag Team Champions, the Heat Seekers. As I hear that, do not want to hear that. They don't like this announcement. Here it is. The Heat Seekers have just pulled it off. And you just heard, uh, I don't know if you caught Russell over there, he was just telling the, the ring announcer, say it again, say it again. There's the, uh, the fight club. He, Jeff Lewis Neal doesn't even look like he knows what happened. And considering that hit that he took to the back of the head with that belt, he probably doesn't. After a lengthy, lengthy run, as the tag team champions, we got new champions tonight, the Heat Seekers. There's some new champs in town. Number one tag team in Georgia. 